In these two cases, there is a video camera and monitor that I've been given to play with. And over here are some moving headlights that I've also been given to play with. So I've decided to put a camera in one of these lights to make a PTZ camera. Inside the case is a camera. It's a Sony NX5U which was released around 2010 and features a Sony G Master lens with 20x optical zoom, dual SD card slots, and was the first Sony camcorder to have an optional GPS functionality. For testing this, I'm pairing it with a Data Video TLM 700 HD 7 inch field monitor. Now it's all relatively old gear, but it's still surprisingly functional. The camera gets plugged into a brick, brick gets plugged into the wall, monitor gets plugged into the camera, and it all should just work. In this case, I have to manually set the date, time, and video output as the internal clock battery in the camera is dead. I'm working on a replacement, but it's not going to be here for a while. Now turning our attention to the light, it's a Ropey ColorSpot 700E, which is a couple years older than the camera. This one has already been gutted as it's had some severe problems and is now parts unit. Luckily, the problems don't affect its panel tilt, so it's perfect for this project. Let's start this project. The first thing I had to do was remove everything that was not needed from the light. This included most of the cabling, front optics, lamp base, and a few other things. It was a real pain to do this as there were a lot of screws and bolts that had been rusted or stripped or both. After I'd done that, I needed to figure out a way to mount the camera in the light. Surprisingly, this part was one of the easiest of this build. I found a piece of C-channel aluminium, which I mounted using some L-brackets and holes I drilled. Next, I took it outside to test. Turned it on and found out something very annoying. When the light boots up, it tilts all the way to one side to find where the center is. Turns out that side it tilts toward is the side I mounted the camera on, so I had to mount the camera on the other side. After doing this, I added a counterweight, and now we have the basic frameworks figured out. Next, I had to deal with the problem of the camera flipping over and hitting the screen. To fix this, I added a metal bracket over the screen, which takes the impact instead of the screen. Next, I added a metal mounting plate to the counterweight, so it wasn't relying on structural zip ties. I bent a washer into a cone shape so the weight stays in the center and doesn't shift around. After some faffing, I moved onto the bench to give it another test. After I did that, I spent almost two days trying to figure out how to control it. First I tried using serial communication, known as LAG, which for the life of me I could not get working. Then I tried to use IR to control the camera, which I also couldn't get working. So in the end, I just went with the cheap solution. And I'm just going to put a servo on here. I'm going to mount it from this wall and make a little aluminium bracket um, and I'm program it probably with a joystick or something just to test it with. I went and drew up a diagram of what I needed to make and cut it out of a piece of aluminium. mounted the servo motor onto the bracket and then mounted it all to the light. So this plate came from the inside of here and that's what I'm going to mount the Arduino to because it comes off fairly easily with just two screws from the outside. Alright, so I have done some things, um, it's been about 15 minutes, and I have mapped the joystick to the servo, to 
Now I just need to put it in the light and it should hopefully work. Now I've got to figure out how to power the Arduino. I first tried taking power from the camera itself, but that didn't work. So, I made a cable. It goes from here to the Arduino. This is the joystick. This is the computer, like the Arduino. And this communicates to this uh, servo, which is on the um, seesaw switch, or the rocker, or whatever you want to call it. Which means when I put this up, Put it upside down. When I put this up, it zooms in. When I put this out, it zooms out. With that now done, I've got to work on running cables. I took off a side panel and started disconnecting the wires I don't need after checking them where they went with a multimeter. I then need to take the head of the light off the body. I unscrewed a bunch of screws and labeled, then disconnect the wires that I would still need. After that, I very carefully lifted off the head of the light. <laughs> I then unscrewed the bottom of the yoke from the base of the light and thread it through an SDR cable, DMX cable and power cable. I then zip tied all the cables back up, just how it was from the factory, and put the light head back on the body. After I put it back together, I terminated both SDI ends and drilled a hole in the faceplate for an SDI connector. I had to cut a chunk out of the heatsink to be able to run the cable. The heatsink is for the lamp power supply which is no longer in use so cutting this won't cause any problems. For the camera's power, I ran a long figure 8 cable down the yoke with the SDI and DMX and terminated the ends with spade connectors which I then connected to the fuse as they helpfully had two connection points for both ground and positive. Then I put it back together. Time for a test. Yep, works as expected. I then made a wire split to take two DMX out so I can piggyback the DMX to the Arduino off the DMX port of the faceplate. I made it so I could drill some holes and mount it just above the port. So that sits in there as a uh, wire split. After I did that, I terminated the DMX <coughs> microphone cable and moved on to the Arduino DMX shield. I then had a chat with my brother who knows much more about DMX than I do. He told me how to make the shield and helped me debug it. We then took it to his room for testing, and yes he does have a grand MA1 in his bedroom. Turns out it did not work, and it took my brother several hours of testing to fix it, most of which I was helpfully asleep for. Thanks to my brother for helping, and I'll swap to him. So, it's now 11.40. I've done a number of troubleshooting options. Found that this and these weren't connected. Fixed that. Found that A and B were connected. And I fixed them. I added these for testing. Continuity tested everything else. So I think it could be the chip, especially with some low resistances across pins. Swap the pins, there's the Arduino, and moment of truth. If this works, it'll go rainbow. That took more than a little bit longer than it should have. Alright, so Arduino DMX's receiver is loaded. As you can see, it's currently not receiving anything. Let's plug this in. Bingo. Alright, thanks Sam. Let's mount this camera back into the light and test it. Yoink. Try to zoom.
and it zooms. Incredible. It's taken so many days to get up to this point so far. Now it's time to make it look a little bit nicer. This back needs to go here. Um, doesn't fit because of the plate size, so you got to fix that. There's a hole in the back here from where there was a panel, which we need to fill. And we need to make a top panel for this, I think. And fix this seal. So here I'm measuring up where I need to cut the panel to. And here I'm cutting out and filing the edges flat. And about 20 minutes later, there's your newly fitted plate. Yes, I'm aware that's not centered to the plate. I don't know how it happened, but it's only just slightly off, so I don't really care. Now to put it back on. After I'd done that, it was time to focus on the missing grill. After some unscrewing, some banging, some more unscrewing, some slicing, and some more banging, it came apart. I made a frame for it and mounted it back in the case with some Meccano L brackets. After that was done, I now have to work on the front shell, which is a bit more complex. I had to cut out some specific holes and shapes into the shell, as the top of the camera did not fit inside. I then had to make another grill fit, this time which was a bit easier, as the mounting points were all still there. I just had to take out some heat fins to fit the power supply. I put the seals back on and held the top of the shell in with some springs around the metal bumpers as the original screw points were no longer there. And that's the light done. Let's go and test it. Plugging it in and turning it on, we can see the camera is still outputting video. And connecting to a computer, we can test the pan, tilt and zoom. Now, you thought this was the end of the video, and I mean, it almost is, but not for me. I was only halfway through, and I got to this point, and I realised, how am I going to control this? You could use a lighting console, but they're big, bulky, and annoying, so I decided to make my own control box. I'm going to run you through how it works. I went out and bought an Arduino Uno R3, or a clone of it, at least, and I got a prototype board. On that prototype board, I made a DMX shield, which can control the two joysticks, and it also controls the screen. I then wired that up into a control box that I made several years ago in another video, I'll link that in the top corner, and I did a bit of programming, head scratching, wondering why the programming wasn't working, more programming, and eventually got it to work. I'll go demonstrate it for you. So, you got the pan, you got the tilt, this display here is, uh, shows you where you are relative to the center. Alright, now you got the basics of it, let me tell you why it sucks. Too fast for fine movements. Couldn't program it without taking the box apart. It's really annoying to have to continue going to the exact same spots over and over again. The joysticks were really finicky. It was using a male 3-pin DMX when it should be in female 5-pin DMX. Its joystick dead zones were squares, not circles. It just kinda sucked. So, how did I find this out? Well, I went and took it out for testing, and it went surprisingly well, but there were definitely some problems with it. So I spent the next two weeks designing and revising all the features that it would need to have. And I came up with this. Alright, here's the control box. You got your pan and tilt. You got your zoom. Here's your preset knob, which selects the preset. Press and hold to save the preset. Press once to recall the preset. Fast, or, yeah, fast, medium, and slow speeds. You got your DMX 5 pin on the back your USB Type-B so you can actually program it and your screen that tells you where you are and also kinda looks like a face so you got the two eyes and you got the you've got the SDI connection which runs into the monitor you've got your 5 pin DMX which runs into the back of the control box your power which runs down to your power
So you got your preset here, which selects your different presets. Wow, my English is on point today. You've got your pan. Oh, I forgot to turn the camera on. Got your pan. Got your tilt. Got your way over exposed iris. Got your zoom. And you got the different speeds. So right now that's really fast. You can kind of do slow movement on it, but it's really finicky. You've got your medium. Which is a little bit slower. And then you get your slow, which is nice and slow. Get slow, medium, fast. Now, how your presets work is you select the preset, you position the camera, press and hold the button, save the preset, and then you can just recall the preset. Yike. And it goes to position. Or if I want to do a second preset. Or a third preset. Or an eighth preset. You get the point. Now, the presets don't actually affect the zoom because the zoom is not a specific value. It's either in or out. So I'd have to make it go all the way back out and then back in. But I think it's just faster for the user to just zoom in or out. And I'm pretty sure that's everything that needs to be covered. The screen doesn't actually flick like that, it's just the shutter speed. And don't ask me what's going on with the LED strips, I don't know what demon has possessed them. And that's about it for the video, not much else to add onto this. I want to thank my brother for helping me with the DMX, and I want to thank the people who let me play with the camera and the light, and I want to thank you guys for watching. I don't use the asses, but I'd love if you'd hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up. It's incredibly amazing to me, the amount of people that want to watch the stuff that I make. Absolutely love that. Thank you for watching. Mm-hmm.